Hi, today I'm going to be busting the myth that carbs make you fat. People have a perception that eating a lot of carbohydrates or sugar will make one put on body fat. Labeling certain high fat foods like chocolate bars, dairy ice cream, and store-bought potato chips as being high carb foods perpetuates this myth. These junk foods do contain sugar, but a large percentage of the calories are from fat. Therefore, when people eat these foods, they gain body fat. But it's not because of the sugar content, it's because of the fat content. Some of these foods are also high in sodium, which can cause water retention, and that can look like fat. Another way that the myth is perpetuated is when people who come from a background of restricting carbohydrate calories or calories in general start putting on weight, they blame the carbs, even if it's from relatively unprocessed carbs like fruit, starchy vegetables, whole grains or legumes. This could be for two reasons. One is that their body is adjusting to finally getting enough calories, so it holds onto extra weight for a period of time. This is what happens after any calorie restricted diet. When someone starts eating more calories, it takes time for the body to trust that it will be getting enough calories and stop holding onto excess weight. The other reason is that the weight they are gaining after eating carbs is not fat, but the glycogen that their body stores as energy and the water retention that comes with it. Eating a high protein or high fat diet while restricting carbohydrate intake isn't healthy or sustainable. It's ketogenic, which is an unnatural state for the human body to be in long term. It does result in weight loss, but also in lower energy, because carbohydrates are the body's preferred fuel. A high protein or high fat diet also increases a person's risk of getting chronic illnesses such as heart disease and diabetes. The World Health Organization recommends getting 5% of your calories from protein, which is easily exceeded by eating only whole plant foods. For example, white rice is 7% protein and oats are 15% protein. Dr. McDougall points out that all plants contain all the essential amino acids in proper balance for ideal human growth. In other words, it is impossible to make up a diet deficient in certain individual amino acids from any unrefined starches such as rice and potatoes. The real problems come with protein, usually the result of a diet high in animal foods. Fat is already in the chemical form for storage and is almost effortlessly moved from the fork and spoon to the body's fat cells, costing only 3% of the calories from fat. In fact, this transfer is performed so easily that the chemical structure of the dietary fat remains largely unchanged as it is stored. To convert carbohydrate into fat is expensive, costing 30% of the calories, and therefore this conversion is relatively limited on the Western diet. For optimal health, it is best to keep your protein intake close to the minimum. Getting too much protein, especially from animal flesh or secretions, will result in poorer health. Now, I will go through a few of the sources of information that I found about the impact of a high-carbohydrate, low-fat diet on weight loss. The first source is a video made by Dr. Michael Greger called Waistline Expanding Food. Abdominal girth appears directly related to meat consumption. A third of a centimeter increase in waist circumference for every 10 grams of meat consumed. That means an inch onto our waist for every daily burger, so, so like one belt notch per burger. But it's not just about cutting back on meat, dairy, and eggs. In a study just released this year, the diets of hundreds of identical twins were analyzed, same exact genes, but those eating more plant-based diets had more favorable levels of this hormone secreted by human fat cells that helps control weight. So when people say they are eating more protein, as in more meat, and restricting the carbs in order to lose weight, it's counterproductive. Another source is the chapter Nutrition and Weight Management in Cancer Survivors in the Handbook of Cancer Survivorship by Michael Feuerstein. On page 275, the book cites three studies that report that the consumption of a high-carb, low-fat diet results in an increase in calorie intake, but a decrease in body weight, including one that reports that a diet rich 
in complex calves result in an increase in lean body mass and a decrease in fat mass amongst 34 subjects with impaired glucose intolerance. In addition, a 2005 study by Dr. Neil Bernard shows that a high-carb, low-fat vegan diet leads to significant weight loss without the need to restrict calories. The participants of this study, ranging from 44 to 73, were assigned to either a low-fat vegan diet or a conventional low-fat diet based on the guidelines of the National Cholesterol Education Program. They weren't allowed to exercise because that would have influenced the results. The vegan group lost one pound per week, while the control group lost half a pound a week. The participants who ate the low-fat vegan diet lost an average of 13 pounds in 14 weeks. So why is it that they were able to lose weight without restricting the calories? One answer could be that the foods were more filling because they had more fiber so that they naturally ate fewer calories. But this wasn't the only reason. The other reason for this weight loss, despite not intentionally restricting calories, is more fascinating. Those on the vegan diet had an increased after-meal calorie burn. After 14 weeks on the high-carb, low-fat vegan diet, the participants had a noticeable jump in their after-meal calorie burn, while those in the control group didn't experience this increased calorie burn. This study found that this greater calorie burn was because of increased insulin sensitivity that caused their cells to pull glucose out of their bloodstream more quickly. I will also outline the legacy of Walter Kempner, who was one of the first to document and publish research showing the power of a plant-based, high-carb, low-fat diet in preventing and reversing disease. In his attempts to stop the progression of kidney disease in his patients, he came across a diet that not only helped with kidney disease, but also had a dramatic impact on cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. It was extremely high in carbs, focusing on one single carb, which was white rice, with the addition of some fruits and vegetables. These benefits were sustained as long as the patients adhered to the diet, which provided 50 milligrams of sodium per day, with less than 5% of calories from fat, and 5% from protein. Weight loss was difficult to avoid, so the diet soon began to serve as a direct treatment for obesity and all the problems associated with obesity. So there is plenty of proof that one can lose weight on a high carb, low fat diet without putting a limit on carbs, but is it possible to gain body fat if you massively overeat on carbs? The best academic resources that I could find to answer this question are reviews by M.K. Hellestein in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition, 1999. The article is called De Novo Lipogenesis in Humans, Metabolic and Regulatory Aspects, and also No Common Energy Currency, De Novo Lipogenesis. So I put the links in the description box if you want to read the whole articles. In the first review, Hellestein concludes that De Novo Lipogenesis is not the pathway of first result for added dietary carbohydrate. Under most dietary conditions, the two major macronutrient energy sources, carbohydrates and fat, are therefore not interconvertible currencies. Carbohydrates and fat have independent, though interacting, economies and independent regulation. Here is a study called Glycogen Storage Capacity and De Novo Lipogenesis During Massive Carbohydrate Feeding in Man. Glycogen storage capacity in man is approximately 15 grams per kilo of body weight and can accommodate a gain of approximately 500 grams before net lipid synthesis contributes to increasing body fat mass. When the glycogen stores are saturated, massive intakes of carbohydrate are disposed of by high carbohydrate oxidation rates and substantial de novo lipid synthesis. The bottom line is, eating a minimum of 10 grams of carbs per kilo of body weight a day, so for me, 500 grams of carbs or 2,000 calories from carbs or 2,400 calories in total if 80% of my calories are from carbs, from a whole foods plant-based diet will have a more slimming effect. People will lose weight if they undereat, but when there's the option to eat until you're full and place no intentional restriction on carbohydrates except to stop eating when you feel satisfied, 
I don't see why anyone would undereat. By undereating, you get less nutrition, less fuel for your body, and eventually you'll get cravings for food that are not at all healthy. Glucose is your body's preferred fuel, and your body is constantly using it to maintain healthy bodily functions. The studies have shown that you can eat a whole foods plant-based diet, which is naturally high in carbohydrates from fruit, starchy vegetables, whole grains, gluten-free if preferred, and legumes, without needing to use portion control or calorie counting to avoid overeating.